It's springtime on Pelee Island. The snow has melted and the plants are beginning to grow. The air is filled with the sounds of birds returning from the south. But here at this vernal pool, all is silent. No trilling of chorus frogs or spring peepers, so common elsewhere in Ontario. But there is life here, and it has been here for over 4,000 years. These small mouse salamanders have survived thousands of years, but now they are endangered, and this island is their only remaining home in Canada. There's essentially three species of salamanders here on the island. You have smallmouth salamanders, blue spotted salamanders, and then a unique salamander called the unisexual ambistoma. And together here on Pili, they form a unique salamander complex, unlike uh, any of the other salamander complexes in the rest of Ontario. A salamander complex is a group of salamanders that is so similar in appearance that the boundaries between the individual species are often unclear. The smallmouth salamander is different from uh, a number of the other salamanders we have in Ontario. As their name kind of suggests, they have a much blunter and shorter face. They also have these really um, pretty chubby cheeks, and they generally have smaller heads than most of the other ambistoma that you might be used to seeing. They're quite variable in color, so they can range anywhere from being sort of a grayish or a blackish to being very dark with blue or gray flecking. They're generally a large-bodied salamander, so we're looking at um, 18 centimeters long, something, like, something in that range. A slightly smaller-bodied salamander, the blue-spotted salamander, is either black or gray-brown with whitish-blue spots. And then the unisexual salamanders will be intermediate in appearance between the smallmouth salamander and the blue-spotted salamander. Their appearance is dependent on how much DNA they have from the smallmouth salamander uh, genome and how much DNA they have from the blue-spotted salamander genome. The unisexual salamanders are unique. They are all born female, but in order to reproduce, they depend on the males from the other two species. Tom and his team are here to study this complex and to learn what can be done to ensure the survival of the three species of salamander. Today, they are dipnetting larvae, counting them, and then measuring them in order to get an estimation of their population and health. That's really important baseline data that we can compare and look for long-term trends in terms of how the population is doing over the long term. The smallmouth salamanders and the unisexual salamanders are both species at risk in Ontario. The smallmouth salamanders are also federally listed as endangered. This means they are on the brink of local extirpation and even extinction. There's a number of things that threaten uh, those salamanders on Pelee Island. Um, one of them is habitat loss and degradation. So historically there was a lot of wetland and forested habitat on the island, but landscape changes, um, some historic and some more recent, have reduced the amount of suitable habitat. And so we're hoping that with some of the restoration work that various NGOs are doing on the island, we can increase that, that uh, suitable habitat for the animals and hopefully uh, help to secure their long-term persistence on the island. Uh, a number of other things pose important threats as well. Subsidized predators like raccoons and even turkeys, road mortality. If ponds are close to a road or if the pond and the, um, the terrestrial site where they live, which is usually a forest, if that's separated by a road, that poses a really important threat. Smallmouth salamander occurs nowhere else in Ontario. And so that makes the habitat here on Pili particularly important to the long-term persistence of, of that salamander, as well as the unique salamander complex. Like many species, salamanders need a diversity of habitats throughout their yearly life cycle, which starts here on Pili during the last two weeks of March. Usually on rainy nights, the males will start to walk to their breeding sites, the ponds which could be up to 300 meters away. And so they'll walk along the forest floor, usually on rainy nights or wet nights. They'll walk to those ponds to breed. Um, and then one or two days later, the females will lay eggs, usually on sticks or, or vegetation um, in the pond. The ponds that the salamanders breed in have to be fishless uh, because they can't tolerate fish. The fish eat the eggs and eat the larvae. And those eggs will um, 
will develop for another month or so, and then they'll start hatching usually in uh, sometime in April. Um, and the larvae will develop from then until the end of June. So if the water dries up before then, all the larvae will, will perish. The larvae will emerge sometime after mid to late June, and then they emerge as metamorphs. Uh, and these little metamorphs, which are really adorable and tiny little salamanders, will uh, walk into, uh, into the forest and try and find a, a, a place to live. And so that will either be under leaves or under some sort of light cover until they find a more permanent home under a log or a rock. And uh, they'll live like that for two, possibly three years before they return to the ponds to breed. Salamanders on Pelee and elsewhere need our help. If we are fortunate enough to be a landowner, we have a special opportunity to help these species at risk. Landowners want to support the salamanders on, on Pelee Island. Probably the most important thing is to try and maintain your forest cover. Um, so if you have a nice forest block, try to retain at least a, a parcel of that land. Um, and when trees fall down or when there's a, a forest woody debris sitting on the forest floor, leave it. That's what the salamanders use. Another thing that's really important is to maintain those semi-permanent ponds. Protection of, of these habitats like forested areas and temporary or vernal ponds with, that don't have fish in them, that's essential to the survival. Without those habitats, the animals can't complete their life cycle and they'll eventually be doomed to local extirpation and eventually extinction. Protecting and recovering species at risk and their habitats is a key part of conserving Ontario's biodiversity. No matter where you live, you can help save a species.